Let me get it. Lunch with Leah, episode 320. Lunch with Leah, episode 320. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the world of Leah Black. <laughs> it's all fabulous over here. I still have this rotten cold. I can hardly get myself going. I'm li- I have to get myself coffee to get wound up to talk to you guys today. Thank you. Look what Joanne Bibalo from Canada sent us. It's ha- we have half of them left. Half have died. We're preserving them as long as we can. They're so beautiful. She's the author of Lush and Lux, Powered by Positivity. Joanne, B-I-B-O-L-O. It's a fantastic book. You should go online and buy it. She's from Canada. I love it. And she's adorable. <laughs> what are we laughing what at? You can't believe what's happening. Uh, what's happening? We got, we, there we go. Oh, well, what happened? <laughs> you were looking like a kitty cat. There was a cat face on you. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> you know, Trump may want to grab me by the you know what. <laughs> 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 Who did that? Those are devil horns. <laughs> There's a filter, and when we hit live, my finger must have hit it, and it added the cat. Well, whatever. Everybody knows I'm not technical enough to figure out to put the bunny ears on. So there. <laughs> so anyway, now that I see, that's what happens when uh, I'm not on top of well, this Well, maybe we should do it more because per- people are loving it. <laughs> <laughs> maybe you should put a crown on my head. Forget the rest of it. Put a crown on there's, my there's head. There's one of those, too. Oh, Lord. So listen to this. So, you know, everybody has a cold. Even Haiti at the house has a cold. I'm telling you. And so the house has been freezing cold because the house is solid coral rock. So it maintains the coolness. We hardly ever even need the air conditioning downstairs, even in the summer. So I go in the kitchen, and Freda's always got, like, earmuffs and coats and those <laughs> leggings and then boots and all this stuff on, you know. So Roy said, he walks in the kitchen, he goes, you need to go look in the kitchen what's going on with Freda. I'm like, what's going on with Freda? So I go down there, and you know we have a gas stove. It's got like eight burners on it. She's got all eight burners on burning on the stove. I'm like, Freda, what do you know in Spanish? What are you doing? She goes, oh, it's, it keeps the house warm. So what she's been doing for 20 years, oh, 25 years, when word. she gets cold in the kitchen, she turns all the gas burners <laughs> oh on gosh. to warm up the kitchen. Because she, while that's on, she doesn't know we have a heater in the kitchen and we have an air conditioner in the kitchen and the air conditioner's on. So then Roy herself. went over and showed her how to turn the air conditioner off and the heater on so she's not having a fire going on in the kitchen. So I talked to Heidi. I go, Heidi, go find out because Heidi's bilingual. I go, find out what in the hell's going on. She goes, well, she didn't know you had a heater and she didn't know the air conditioning was on. So she just warms herself up by turning on the burners all the time. And I'm like, well, did you know that? She goes, oh, yeah, we go in there. They're always on. I'm like, are you kidding? We had a fireplace going on in the kitchen on the stove. I mean, I just can't even believe it. She's crazy. This is crazy. This is my house. This is why I can't. Oh God, I have insane. to come to work just to get away from the zoo. <laughs> Meanwhile, that is crazy. you know, RJ and I have a trip turned to tr- uh, trip t- plan to go do dumb gay politics with uh, Julie and Brandy in Austin on what is that, the 15th of February? And then RJ is going to go visit all his cousins and my parents and everything. But if that TSA thing and those um, and isn't work, if the sh- government is shut down, I don't know if it's safe to get on a plane. I mean, I don't know. <sighs> I mean, you can still. You can still travel. It just takes longer to get through the security. Yeah, right but you know what? You can travel. But if you're an air traffic controller, yeah. or, and I don't even know if they're getting paid or if they've laid off some of them and you're tired or you feel you're being ripped off and you're not getting paid and you're a little bit of a nut job and you're like, I'm not getting paid anyway. I agree with you. You know, or if you're TSA and they're not showing up and then they've already t- closed down one terminal in Houston and one in Miami, the l- lines are three and a half hours long now to get through TSA. And you're like, you know, if you're a terrorist, you're like, well, this is the time to go through. I just don't know that it's so safe to travel. So I don't know about that one. But anyway, so dumb gay politics. We're going to do a live show there on that day. But let me tell you, they had Tom Arnold on their podcast. I listened to it last night. I was laughing so hard. Tom Arnold is hilarious. He is just one stream of consciousness gone wild. So he was friends with Trump for 30 years. 
he tells the story about Mark Burnett and how they got in the fight at the thing. And then he tells the story, which this is the third person I've heard this from, all of which are people that knew Trump very well and were credible people. So I believe it to be true. How Trump had his surgery where they cut across his head and tightened his scalp. And then, it, and then my, the other person told me the doctor used black uh, thread and it made a line across. And that's how he started that whole comb over thing. And that was the night he got mad and, and, and apparently, allegedly, according to Ivana, who's changed her story now, beat her up because he was mad at her for recommending he get it done. Well, anyway, he tells the story about how he, Trump had that done. And I mean, it was so funny. You have to go to dumb gay politics slash Tom Arnold and listen to the story. He tells so many stories. And I told him last night, I said, you just got to write a book. That's it. You got to write, write a book. <laughs> so anyway, that. I want to thank you guys all for listening and watching because apparently last week was a hit show with Frankie Grande. Frankie J. Grande. <laughs> yes, apparently, big numbers. Everybody watched the show and shared it. Of course, he has a huge following, so probably his followers and not mine. <laughs> anyway, uh, <clears throat> and then... Also, we got a big response to uh, when I was on Jeff Lewis's radio show, uh, the two times during the holidays. So you should go listen to both of those and put comments under uh, his um, under his Instagram page because those were both good shows. We got comments on that. You're getting lots of comments here. People really like the show with you all together. Oh, they good. Which one? Did, which show are they liking? They loved the Frankie show last week. They said that you got Fabulous. you guys were really good together. Uh, Rosa Linda's, um, Linda Renindez says yes. You all were absolutely wonderful. Fabulous. When he and, broke out into song and dance, I was like a private Broadway performance <laughs> right here. David Evan Bradley <laughs> says. Hi from 32,000 feet. <laughs> Are you in the air? Oh my God, and here I am talking about that. Well, I hope you don't get nervous. Don't get nervous. It's safe. It's safe. <laughs> All the air traffic controllers are on their best behavior today, David. Do not be worried. And one of your top fans, Stephen Living, says hello from New York City. And, oh my God, you know how cold it is there? It's got to be freezing. Oh my God. And Margaret says she liked the episode with Kelly Dodd, too. She said, Oh, that's right. I forgot we had the Kelly Dodd episode that was funny. She She's hilariously a hoot, too, right? Now, apparently, uh, according to um, a tweet that I saw, or no, Heather sent me, or somebody sent me an article that Jim Bellissimo dropped his case against uh, Shannon for what he, she said on Heather's show about... Um, about the trampolines or whatever. Right. But then the judge, but he said, the article said that the judge didn't drop the other case, but it's a different judge, so that doesn't mean anything. So I hope the other case gets dropped. Oh, and then yesterday I did a taping. Oh, it was actually, it was live, but you can find it. It was, it's a video web series called Design Talk Live. You should go look at that. We had an interesting little conversation there, uh, and that was kind of fun. And on before me was, uh, What's his name? Randy Spelling, Tori Spelling's brother. Anyway, that was fun. And they have a nice big following. So you guys can catch up with that. And then, of course, we had the Critics' Choice Awards, which I talk, we can talk about a little bit later. And I want to tell you, James and Jason, a lot of people are writing in talking about what great service they get here, Jason, how they <laughs> love how nice and friendly you guys are, how you package those packages up perfect when you send them out, how if they have a question about the skincare, they call and you'll talk to them for hours. That's why Jason does that job and not me, because I'm like bottom line. Yes, it does this. No, it doesn't do that. Have a good day. Bye. And then, you know, Jay, yeah, Jace is trying. You, and then Jace well. got our podcast going and he does all that behind the scenes and all that posting and all that stuff. So everyone's complimenting the two of you. Well, but don't expect a raise. Well, thank you raise. very much. <laughs> don't expect a raise just because you get the compliments. <laughs> Unless you guys want to start a GoFundMe page to pay my overhead here. <laughs> so anyway, uh, what else? Um, Oh, yeah, so I told you about Frankie. But anyway, on the Frankie interview, oh, my God, I can't right now. Let's just do this. Wait, hold on. Just give me one second. Hold on. Yeah, I'm on in the middle of something. Tell me. Yeah. <laughs> and I think we should take our five-second break. <laughs> yeah, he's going to be there at four. Thanks. Okay. Can you believe this? I have to – I'm RJ scheduler. I'm, I'm, I'm RJ scheduler. Okay. So, uh, my – what? But anyway, so in, in Frankie's interview, I thought it was really interesting. He opened up about his sobriety. He opened up about his gay lifestyle. He opened up about his love life. He opened up about – he told us all about all the projects he's done. It was really a very interesting 
I thought it was interesting. Didn't you guys think it was interesting? I thought it was very I interesting. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was you know, extremely informative was and revealing. Yeah. But yeah, you all have great chemistry together too. So it was really, you, you know, the, the, well, we the banter have, back and forth was great. We used to have that podcast together called Reality Check. We did that for a long time until he went into Big Brother and had to disappear on me. And then we didn't start it up again. Someone else is using our name at that point. Uh, uh, in the Critics' Choice Awards, uh, the ones that stood out to me was that guy got another, uh, the guy that did Versace got the Critics' Choice Award. Darren again. Chris. Yeah. And he wore Dior. Oh, yeah, I did wear Dior. <laughs> but let me tell you, he's very cute. But I was still surprised because it was such a dark show that it was, it was, it was great. I loved it. I'm glad I watched it. It was just so dark. And I thought that there were people that criticized the, the way Versace was depicted, but it didn't affect him getting awards. The other one that stood out, Lady Gaga, got the award for a uh, Tide with Glenn Close for, uh, Glenn Close for Best Actress. And uh, so that she got a uh, Critics' Choice Award, so I thought that stood out to me. And she gave a very emotional speech. And then I read uh, later on Instagram or somewhere that her horse, her favorite horse, Annabelle, mm-hmm. her only horse, I don't know, that she's had for years, and she showed a picture riding it, was dying that night. And she left early the Critics' Cho- Choice Award to go be with her do- her horse while he died. I know. They had to put it down. It, it was horrible. They had to put it down. It broke my heart. I mean, can you imagine? I can't even... I can't even handle my little dogs dying. So a horse is even closer to a human being than, you know, a dog. I just, oh, it was terrible. Anyway, and then the other one that stood out was Christian Bale won again. Poor Bradley Cooper can't get a break. He can't win because of Christian Bale's in the way. Well, I told you guys. Yeah, Christian. The star is Christian boring. <laughs> well, I, no, I liked him. I like he was good. And then that that guy Rome, that guy gets the director for Roma again. So Brad like got got knocked out there. But what bothered me about um, about Christian Bale again was that he's in a category they shouldn't be in. Why are they calling that a comedy? Vice wasn't a comedy. I don't think it was a comedy. Well, it, it has to do with the way that they're allowed to submit the uh, movies. And if they don't think that they can win in one category, they'll list it under another. Yeah, but I don't think that's fair because I don't think that's a comedy. I mean, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't think you should have been in the comedy category. But anyway. Yeah, and I then, think they do that all the time. It's horrible. They do. I don't like it. And celebrity, it should be consistent. In celebrity news, Carol Channing died at 97. Yeah, that she had a big long huge yeah, career. Yeah, she was like the life of Broadway for a Fabulous, long time. Fabulous, yeah, she was major and uh, ninety-seven. That's that's living the life. Hugh Grant is urgently appealing for people. Someone broke into his car, stole everything out of it, including a script that he's been working on with all the notes on the side of it for months. And he's saying, "Just give me back my script. I don't care about everything else." If I were you and I stole it and had the script, I'd just mail him the damn script. What do you want the script for? People are just too much. At the Super Bowl, Maroon 5 is going to be performing at halftime with Big Boy and Travis Scott. Well, I like Maroon 5. Mm-hmm. Do you guys like Maroon 5? <laughs> I do I like Maroon, Maroon 5. 5. The other two. I'm not sure who Big Boy yeah. is. They're, but they're like, like Atlanta royalty, so it oh, fits Atlanta. the... Oh, that's why. It's in Atlanta. Okay. And then Travis Scott, or, you know, he's a country and western star. Um, now, I don't know. Are they going to even... Ha- how are people going to get to the Super Bowl if the airlines are dysfunctional? They better get this government up and running. What is wrong with them? All you need to do, Trump, is just say, you know what? <clears throat> Mitch McConnell held a vote. They overrode me. I don't agree with them. We're going to run the government. And while running the government, we're going to figure out how to solve this problem. And move on! The bigger you just keep digging yourself in deeper and deeper and deeper as, as, as uh, approval ratings down like in the low 30s and now at this point, which it should have been in the low 10s all along. Uh, Chris Pratt and Katherine Schwarzenegger are engaged after a very short, few month uh, love fest. So, how do you feel about that? Hmm. Yeah, no, I mean, I think it's interesting, but I thought the story, the 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 story that was interesting, or the piece of it was that as soon as she said yes, he texted his ex and said, "Yes, she said yes." Oh no, they're good friends. I know, they but all it's went trick or treating weird. together. The ex with her boyfriend, and him with 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 uh, Catherine, and then they took the kid, and they're all good friends. So that's not good. I just, 
What are you laughing about? One of the the people that are watching the show said, "Please Google Travis Scott. He is not a country singer." Oh, he's not. <laughs> and he's not. He's a hip hop. <laughs> oh, I have him mixed up with somebody else. Then I'm oh, sorry. You know what? I was testing to see if he's you guys a were listening. And obviously you're listening. So I appreciate the fact that you're listening. I was just a test. It was a test. Now then the Ray Donovan finale was fantastic. Oh my God. Ray Donovan, I think, had their best season ever. New York is where that show should be. I'm sorry. Staten Island, you know, Queens, the Bronx. It is a New York show. It was great in Beverly Hills, but it's nothing to compare what it is in New York because just the way they act and conduct business and do things is just such a New York style. You know, it's just like so good. <laughs> Tra- Travis Scott is Kylie Jenner's boyfriend. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, I had him really. We're mixed getting up, we're getting I? really schooled here right now. Oh Lord. Well, you know what? I won't comment. He is then. Kylie Jenner's baby daddy. So, oh, okay. Yes. All right. Well, I know who he is. I could pick him out if I saw him on the street. I'd recognize him. They said they love it when you mess up. You're oh, a true I- comic. <laughs> Just love it all the time because I'm one big mess. Okay. Travis Trent is the country. Travis Trent. I was thinking of Travis Trent. I'm from Texas. I was thinking of Travis Trent. You know, maybe Travis Trent should get on the damn Super Bowl. Maybe it's like meant to be that I said that and then they're going to invite him next year. Oh my gosh. Oh my God. Now, the Spice Girls, according to TMZ, are coming out with a movie. Now, I do know who the Spice Girls are, by the way. I love them. And Missy Elliott is the first female hip hop artist to be inducted into the Songwriters Hall of Fame. Wasn't that fabulous? Hmm. Now, Mariah Carey won her... Well, the court battle is over. She settled a sexual harassment suit with her ex-employee, according to OK Magazine. Now, I thought this was a ridiculous suit to begin with. Apparently, the ex-employee said that she came out in lingerie and that it was sexually explicit and it was offensive and whatever. Are you kidding me? She wears more, less on stage than she wore, I'm sure, that day that you walked in on her. (laughs) So who knows how much money she had to give away to get rid of that. I mean, the Me Too thing, sometimes it just is eventually going to jump the shark. I mean, I agree with a lot of the legitimate complaints. But then, then something like this happens and it makes you like, and you're diminishing the legitimate complaints. You're working for a girl that works out, probably has a perfect body, runs around probably in G-strings and bikinis all the time. And she comes out in her lingerie and you're shocked. I mean, come on, get over your, these people. I just really can't. Oh my God. You're really cutting up the crowd today. Okay. They're loving it. I, I'm going to be a stand-up. I'm going to do a stand-up. Susan Mario Sandler loved- thought you said by squirrels. <laughs> oh, I should, did I, I should have said that. Mario Lopez and Courtney Lopez are having baby number three. I think they're such a cute couple, yeah. aren't they? I like that. I knew Mario before he was Mario Mario. I heard, too, yesterday that he is leaving the show he's on to go to, to, e. go to NBC, and they yeah. are retooling uh, Access Hollywood, and it's going to be called Access with... Uh, uh, what's his name? Mario. Yeah, Mario now, Lopez. I heard that. I don't know if it's true. Yeah, you know who like... will know? Brendan. He'll have all the gossip. But yeah, I heard that as a possibility too. He's really, let and me tell you. they were upset you. because Natalie Morales moved her whole family across the country to head that show after Billy Bush left. Yeah. Or was gone. Yeah. So now apparently the show that Mario's leaving is trying to get Billy Bush. Well, they should put <laughs> Billy Bush back on. You know what irritates me? Billy Bush laughed yeah. at Trump. He got caught up in made all the horrible remarks he's entertaining in his mind a big celebrity keeping him happy getting him on his a game before the interview going along with the crowd laughs at a few things he says that he shouldn't have said any laughing at him probably maybe shouldn't have done it but the punishment didn't meet the crime why in the hell is he not on tv because he laughed at trump's vulgar jokes yeah, he, i mean he lost on. his career and the person it's guilty terrible. of it was made president. It's it ridiculous. It's ridiculous. You can't write I, that no. craziness. Now, Andy Murray, the British tennis star, says he's devastated that he's going to have to retire because of a bad hip. And he was hoping to make Wimbledon his last hurrah, but he doesn't even think that he's going to be able to do that. He's in the Australian Open, I think it is now, and he was in so much pain that he doesn't know if he's going to be able to make it to Wimbledon. So that's kind of sad because he's still young and fabulous. And I guess he had hip surgery or something. I don't know. Oh, I think it's terrible. 
Yeah, he had hip surgery, and I think he has to have it again or something. That's Probably, what the problem but it's is. Just, he's just, you know, at that level, you have to literally just be so perfect. That's the one thing about Serena. She just kept bouncing back, even after having that baby, even after having that blood clot. I mean, it's, it's, that's a level of playing sports. You, it, it's just like, you're like a machine, basically. Mm -hmm. Bohemian Rhapsody has the highest grossing biopic of all times, according to Rolling Stone magazine. According to Rolling Stone magazine, Big Queen East Asian. Now, what the hell and who is that? <laughs> that fan base audience is what catapulted them to be the biggest uh, uh, biopic uh, uh, of all time. Biopic of all time. So I guess he's got some big audience over there that we don't know about. I don't know. Whatever. And Housewife News. This is my favorite movie. This is, well, yeah, it's a great movie. And Housewife News, apparently, I told you about Shannon losing, uh, I mean, not having to pay that money, and the lawyers are going to have to pay her fee on that lawsuit with Jim Bellissimo. Dorit and her husband, allegedly, I don't know if this is true, are $1.2 in debt, and the, the, some of the creditors are threatening seizures. You know, I just don't know if that's true. On the other hand, I was always... Um, I don't know what the word, intrigued or surprised. When she threw that big grand birthday party, and starts flying everybody in on the helicopter, out in the middle of the water to be on the yacht. You know, sometimes people lead off with their act. Do you know what I mean? It's like yes. the, more you, the more you brag or showcase, the less you have. Because the people that I know that have real money, they're very quiet about it. You know, they're not showboaty about it. So I don't always kind of remember what about I that. said as soon as she appeared on the show. Say that again. I said, "Remember what I said." I know you did, Teresa you said and it, Joe. And I said, "Give her the benefit <laughs> of the doubt." And you know what? I don't care if she has any money. I find her entertaining. Yeah. So money or no money, I think she's entertaining. They're, See, that's the problem these girls make. Just be authentic. Just be who you are. If you have money, great. You have money. If you don't have money, don't have money. Like the first season I went on that show, I acted poor. I wore really clothes that were not great, and I didn't wear my jewelry, and I was like low king everything because I didn't want to like stand out and look like and then the next year the producers went into my closet and they said you got all these Bergen bags why aren't you wearing them and I was like you know what I'm just going to be myself and I started being myself I just think you have to be who you are in the world and I if you you know I don't judge people by how much money they have I judge them by the character their character their honesty their integrity their intentions what they do for other people how they treat people so I don't know Dorette if you're broke yeah. just come out and see it we don't care we'll help you make some money we'll buy those swimsuits well, I'm even wearing them, but I might buy one and give it to somebody. They're um, both on Million Dollar Listing LA this season, which just uh, started last week. Yeah. And there's the, so apparently their house was up for sale. Well, that's been up for but sale. But then something happened, and the guys that are on the show lose the listing and the house got robbed apparently or something too and got stripped of all of the, like the um, stuff that was inside of it but there there's going to be a lot of scandal around it. and now it's listed with another agent they said so. wonder if all that stuff was insured hmm. I don't know, i'm just asking it's kind of interesting how all these uh housewives and like million dollar listing shows and stuff on bravo they're all getting targeted to well know, they always these... happen from the time that Teresa giudice ran around and paying cash for everything then they get it unravels and you know but I mean, people uh, yeah. stealing. They're like breaking yeah. into all their homes. Oh, yeah. You got to have uh, security and everything, too. Ask me anything from the Instagram stories. Oh, my God. We're already halfway over the time. Uh, okay. One so let's see. Well, five seconds. You want to do a five second break? Okay. okay. Reese from California. What happened to the Real Housewives of Miami? You were and still are iconic. Well, honey, you've got exquisite taste. And I guess the fat lady's saying, Susie Roach, is your housekeeper Freda still with you? Yep, she's still there. Tracy Dini, are you coming to the OC? Uh, I don't, only the reason I would be in Orange County is if RJ happened to go to school there. Uh, but I do have friends there, but I, I wouldn't be living there because I live in West Hollywood. Uh, fear, fear, F E R G comp. I love the motivational workshop that you did for flipping out. Will you be doing any on your podcast? You know, I could do a series of, <laughs> oh my God, I used to do seminars 10 hours a day, two days in a row, Saturday and Sunday, actually 12 hours from 9 to 9 on Saturday, 9 to 9 on Sunday on business motivation, goal setting, I mean, on and on and on. I could do a series of that on a podcast and we could post it, but I don't think anybody would watch it. So I don't know. It's not going to be worth my time. You got to get me with followers. Uh, it here for kids. I need your show on a daily basis. Well, if we get enough followers, we'll do that. I love hearing your political comments. Well, stay tuned. I've got some for you today. 
Uh, well, thank you very much here for kids. Sanda RV, uh, does RJ travel with me? Yeah, I tra we only travel when he's out of school unless he's in school. And, and then if he's in school and one of us, either Roy or I need to travel for work, one of us is always home with him. We've ne we never leave him alone. And Brendan Jeffrey on, I love you and Frankie Grande together. Well, Brendan, we love it when we're all together. It's time for another party in West Hollywood. Melissa Love, you and Frankie should have your own show, Great Chemistry. We should. Unfortunately, he's between L.A., New York, and Miami. <laughs> I'd have to travel on his schedule, and I can't. Uh, Louis Grande, I love the episode with Frankie. It opened up so much, and it was great, and you're hilarious, and it was great. Oh, well, thank you so much. Do I still do the gala? Uh, we're not doing one this year. Does Frey to work? We did that one already. Um, let's see. Did Leah and Lisa have a feud after the last reunion? Nope, not that I know of, unless she has a feud going on in her head. Uh, how is Mama Elsa? Uh, apparently, she's sick and not doing great, but um, her caretaker has circled the wagon and won't let anybody visit her. Um, let's see. How... I don't know who that person is. Oh, what's Marta's sister up to? Uh, Marta, Joanna's sister. Well, she married a race car driver, and apparently they're very, very happy. She's a very sweet and beautiful girl. How's Karen? Karen is traveling around with some new boyfriend all over the world. She goes to Columbia a lot and rides horses. She's still got her dental clinic and her meta spa, and she goes around and does free surgeries on kids that have um, dental problems around the world. Poor kids. So God bless Karen. Did Lisa build a house on Star Island? Yes, she did. Uh, do they still have Venue Magazine? No, nope. went out of business when Herman died. How is Frankie? Well, you've already heard all about that. And there you have it. Now, I made a list of some of my favorite tweets that went on this week. And then listen to this one. This is, I think this is hilarious. There's this, it's like this 12 or 13 year old kid standing there on the picture with like his peanut butter jars as far as you can see them in every direction. And he tweets out, <laughs> it's hilarious. My name is Bean. I eat peanut butter and jelly muffins for three meals a day. So it's peanut butter and jelly sandwiches on a muffin three times a day. Back in February, my mom bought 72 jars of peanut butter when it was on sale for 78 cents a jar. I numbered each jar. Please have another sale. We're running out. <laughs> oh, if I were that peanut butter company, which is um, L-I-N-U-S, I'd just send the guy a lifetime supply of peanut Jeez. butter and make him my spokesperson. I would have him on TV doing commercials just surrounded by peanut, peanut butter. Oh, my God. It's hilarious. Oh, my God. You've got a lot of comments coming in right now. People said that um, they think Dorit's house was repoed but not broken into. So maybe the I have the story wrong That there. could be. Yeah. Uh, I hope not. I like them. They, went, they said maybe boy – Beth said maybe boy George took it for non-payment from PK. <laughs> um, then, no, boy, boy uh, George is uh, – He's there. He's the client. Yeah, he's the client. So he lives with PK them. would make money off of him, not the other way around. Um, and then it says, uh, maybe oh, they're we asking. should all buy, buy uh, Boy George records or streamings or whatever they are mm -hmm. so that PK can make more money. People wanted, were asking, how do they submit questions? So every Monday on your Instagram stories, we do an Ask Me Anything. It runs for 24 hours. But you can also always email us at hello at leahblack.com. Any questions that you have that come in during the week, we will try to address. I just noticed James is all in Armani today. What are you, cheating on Versace? <laughs> the poor man's <laughs> Versace today. <laughs> Oh my God! I won't tell anyone. That's what always. I mean, I used to before I ever made money in my career. I always wore Armani Exchange. That was my favorite. And now we're up to um, Versace. Yeah. We've moved up in the world. That Liam Black sometimes opportunity <laughs> just turned out well for you. Okay. In other news, this football player was snowed in, and he was being late for a playoff game. He's a big player. And he, he was trying to dig his car out. And this little homeless guy who's living in a, in a suburban, in 19, I think 1995 suburban, sees him digging his car out and goes over and offers to help him. And, and he says, well, I could pull you out, but, you know, I don't want to hurt your new brand new BMW with my 1995 suburban. He goes, no, pull me out. So he pulls him out and the guy goes on the road. Now, the guy rushes to make, barely makes it to the, to the game, the playoff game, and then he decides he's trying to find out who that person is. He wants to do, do something for them for digging him out. 
tweets about it, puts it on social media. They find the guy. All he knew was his first name. They find the guy. He's a homeless guy living out of his suburban. And the football player gives him three tickets to the playoff game. And the guy goes on. They did a little clip of him. And he goes, I've never been to a football game in my life. And this is my first football game ever. And I would have done it for anybody. And I would hope someone would do it for me. And I was uh, just lovely. Oh, that's a feel-good story. That was so good. Anyway, got three tickets to the playoff game. That's great. Aw, I wish we knew who that guy was. I just like. I'd like send him some money to spend at the game. (laughs) Anyway, America is having fewer babies, according to NBC. They're not making enough babies to replace themselves. Well, you know what? I don't think everybody needs to replace themselves. There are a lot of people that just should go unnoticed. There's a a lot of gene pools that need to be stopped. I mean, there are some people that we should just offer free birth control to. NBC is paying $30 million to Megyn Kelly to leave. I mean, what an insult. I will pay you to leave. That's what Charlie Sheen used to say about his She got her full contract. You know, well, she's just... uh, Uh, Seven million people have had the flu this year. Seven million and uh, 80,000 people have been in the hospital with the flu this year. I cannot shake this cold, I'll tell you that. Now, in other news, this blindfolded teen crashed into another vehicle while driving, doing the Bird Box Challenge from the Netflix show Bird Box. People are idiots. And then this is, if I were her parents, I would, t- I would take the keys from the car, I would hide her driver's license, and I would, I would scold her and punish her for being so stupid. She could have killed somebody, ran over somebody, hurt somebody, whatever. I'm sick of people. 500,000 people are sick with a gastro illness on the Royal Caribbean cruise, according to NBC News. So I'm telling you, on these cruise ships, people are getting sick all the time. I'd be nervous to take one. I would one. never go on one. It's I'm, like a just, you know, I'm a germ phobe anyway. <laughs> I, I mean, you just it. have to spend all your time on the balcony eating the oh, fresh air. I, I, You'd have to go in the cafeteria and get your yeah, restaurant yeah. and get your food and take it to your balcony. Oh, I mean, it's no. just gross. I'd be I in can't. a bubble of Purell. I think those... Those ships have probably had so many germs for so many years. Another thing, they dock here. We see them dock at Fisher Island in that area there. So they dock here like at, like at, let's say, I forget what time. They leave on Sunday night, and they come in like on Sunday morning. So they have like an eight-hour turnaround. How do you sterilize and clean down an entire you ship don't. in four to six to eight hours? I don't think you can. The only one I've gone is the World Cruise, where people own their own uh, mansions on yeah, the cruise. Like and below they have deck. Like 60 to 70 <laughs> people in a crew of 300, and then Roy and I and RJ did that. I would do that. Uh-huh. The Westminster Dog Show is coming up February 11th and 12th at Madison Square, Square Gardens. They're going to have 2,800 dogs and 203 breeds. You know, I should have put little baby in that show. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's a full-time job. I know people used to do that. Oh, my God. It's a lot of work, and it's very expensive. I don't know. A you're, lot. You're getting some comments, actually, about your skin care. Okay, here. People let's are asking hear it. some questions. Uh, Brandy Cochran Holcomb says she loves her new face wash and moisturizer. Yay. And Rachel Pinet. Says I'm 42. She's a top fan, by the way, Rachel. Every week, I'm 42 and will be 43 in March. I want to spoil myself with your skincare. What are the basics I should buy? I'm Latina with an olive complexion and a few dark spots. Help. Okay, so let me tell you. This I'm going to go through the deal. Every day in the morning, you wash your face. So we have a wash. Then you add, put a serum on. Now, right now, just to get people hooked on the product, we're offering the serum, which is a $60 retail. We sell it for $29 wholesale for $10. So you put the serum on. Now, what the serum does, it helps to build collagen in your skin and helps you continue to, to, to it, it reduces the amount of collagen that you use. So everybody lose. So everyone should use a serum no matter what. Then you put a moisture lotion or cream on, depending if you prefer a lotion or a cream. Now, the moisture lotion and cream, if you don't keep your face moisturized, you're going to start getting lines and wrinkles a lot quicker. Your skin's going to crack and it's going to dry out. Now, our moisturizer has scientific studies behind it that prove that it, that it increases the moisturization in your skin 400% within two days and 500% within a week. So if you don't buy anything else, you've got to get on the moisturizer. Then if you have those brown spots, I would get the exfoliant because if you slough off all the dead cells, eventually you will maybe slough off some of those um, brown spots. If not, you'll at least even out your skin tone to some degree. And it helps clean the, it does a deep pore cleansing on the uh, pores. Uh, Men love that product. Teenagers love that product. Women like it on their chest. They like it on the back of their hands. You use it on their neck. You use it on your face. It's, you just mix it with a little water and you just, 
lather it up. And ours has a very unique um, uh, exfoliant in it. It's not like sands that you, sand you get off the beach. It's not like everybody else has. It's very unique. So if I were you, I would use that exfoliant. And then the one thing for sure, if you use it long enough, will will help to get rid of those spots and discoloration is the, the face mask. Because if you mix the powder and the gel and you put it on in upward and outward strokes, not only does it tone and firm and tighten and reduce the pore size, it sloughs off the old layer of cells. So if you just keep sloughing off those cells and sloughing off those cells, the new ones will rebuild. But don't, no matter what you do, get out in the sun because that's just going to make them worse. So that's my preaching today. Don't forget to get your $10 moisturizer. You should buy two of them, uh, three of them. You should buy like as many as you can while they're on for $10. You're getting a lot of endorsements from people that are using Richard Burton says that they love your products. Beth Feldman Foster says all your products are the greatest. Look at you. Um, and Aldo Martin says he loves just taking his lunch every Wednesday to see your Oh, face. thank you. Do you have cocktails at lunch? <laughs> Maybe we should start martinis at lunch. <laughs> cocktails with Leah. Cocktails. Um, so listen to this in news. So this man has a lot of noise going on at his, uh, at his uh, house. So the neighbor comes over and knocks on the door and says, could, could you cut the noise down? And the guy says, you know, I'm just going to kill you with kindness. So the neighbor sits just talking like oh well that was and then the guy goes and gets a machete that has kindness engraved on the side of it and starts to whack the guy <laughs> <laughs> oh, my the gosh. guy runs out the door oh my word i mean i mean come on the guy brian stewart 30 years old uh, you know the guy should, don't go complaining to your neighbor if they say they're going to kill you with kindness just get the hell out of there they may have a machete now called kindness kindness a homeless vet in franklin davis is sweet Keeping the Vietnam, Vietnam Veterans Memorial during the shutdown, oh. according to Inquisitor.com. He says he knew some of the people whose names are on the wall and he wanted to honor their lives and oh. by keeping it clean. Isn't that just so sweet? <laughs> Homeless great. vet. I mean, you know, oh, there's so many oh, stories great. out there. I wish I could just help everybody. <laughs> I need to get like $100 billion and just go around and find people that need money and help them set up their lives. You know, like help them get a little apartment, help them get a little car, help them get a job, help them, you know, get, get a resume together. I mean, that's what I would do if I had all the money in the world. I'd just go around and do that. Oh, justice is Merriam-Webster's word of the year for 2018. Now, why do you think everyone's interested in what justice is in 2018? Don't you was think it last that's year complacent? unusual? Everybody wants to know what is justice. When in your lifetime has everyone had to look that up? Exactly. It's just unbelievable. <laughs> Next. Rosalinda Renendez says that she's uh, drinking while f folding laundry and watching you live. And what is she drinking? <laughs> Milk and cookies? <laughs> Martinis? Wine? Wine spritzers? And Rachel Pitta says, thank you. Wash serum, moisturize, exfoliate, face mask. She's got to place an order now. What's so. her name? Her name is um, Rachel Pena, P E N A. Oh, Rachel! If Rachel uh, if Rachel orders that, Jason sent her a little piece of jewelry, oh. like the wrap or bracelet or something. Thank you, Rachel. <laughs> and Rosa says she's drinking wine. Oh, wine! <laughs> and she's in Dallas. That's an hour behind us. <laughs> oh my God, girl! <laughs> well, it's eight o'clock somewhere. She's my kind of girl. <laughs> Uh, Courtney, and so listen to this tweet. I just love this tweet. It's just so funny. Oh, here's one first. Randy Haas says, I'd like to nominate Leah Black for president 2020. <laughs> I was like, well, listen, I'm going to guarantee you one thing. I swear, no matter what, and I mean this with all my heart, I could do a better job than Trump is doing. I know that 1,000%. I would get immediately get every brilliant person that's ever been in their government to come in and set up committees to sort this all out, figure it out, and calm things down. But I'm going to tell you, I'm an organizer. I'd be much better than Trump. C-SPAN. So listen to this. According to Kellyanne Conway, so nasty. She's on. on she tweets um, to Jim. No, she doesn't tweet. She goes on C-SPAN and she skulls Jim Costa. She goes to Jim Costa, I'll be damned if I'm going to sit around and take it and be bullied by somebody who's known for bullying. Can you believe that? That's what she tweets. So she, because she said that. And so I tweeted back and replied. She's saying that to Jim Acosta. So I said to Kellyanne and Jim Acosta, Jim is respected. You're not. You're a hired gun and have no principles. Go back and listen to what you said about Trump when you worked for Ted Cruz. You obviously have no shame. Alternative facts 
according to you are, no, I said according, uh, uh, alternative facts slash translation, translation lies. When she worked for Ted Cruz, she talked about what a scumbag Trump was, what a liar he was, how he had no character, you know, what a con artist. And then she gets dumped from Cruz because, Tom, because what's his name gets the nomination, Trump, and she goes over there and just apologizes for him. Her husband tweets, jo follow George Conway, her husband. He's a very well-respected lawyer, very conservative Republican lawyer. But he tweets stuff about Trump all the time, calling him out on his lies. And then Trump comes and trashes him. Well, you're Mr. Mr. Kelly Conway needs to shut up. Oh, God, I can't with these people. So listen to this in news. This is hilarious to me. So, you know, in Europe, the nudist colonies are very popular. And in the U.S., in California, they used to have nudist colonies. So one time when I was like 18 or 19 or 20 years old or whatever, one of my friends goes, have you ever been to a nudist colony? Col I'm like, I didn't even know they exist. He goes, well, I go there all the time, and you don't have to be nude when you're there, but I'm, I'm going to take you there. So I go there. Everyone there was nude. I was so, I was just like in shock. I didn't even know what to do with myself. I was like, everyone's nude. Everyone was nude. They go on about life like everything's normal. I mean, I'm telling you, they're like, they're like they lay in the sun, you know, they go to the restaurant, they, you know, hang out. They're just all nude. So France opened up a nude restaurant and it's been in business for a few years, but it's called Au, Au Naturel. And they're <laughs> announcing that they're having to close it on February the 16th because there just aren't enough people that are going to it. Well, so there's a whole subculture well, of nudists I, out there. I don't know. I just don't want to go eat somewhere where everyone's naked. I don't eat. Well, no. They're all like the, most of the people like, that go there. They're all naked. They, they live naked. They, they just live in these colonies. They live in a colony where everyone's naked. I guess. I don't know if it's that they feel like that people are too it's freeing um, to them. superficial or too materialistic or if they just feel they want to live in their natural environment. I don't know what it is, but there are new colonies all over the place. <laughs> and they have new beaches, you know, in the south of France all the time. In sad news, NBC reported that a Boeing 707 cargo plane with 16 people on board, only one survived trying to land in Iran. Oh, it was sad. Mm -hmm. And then the teachers are striking in L.A. They were asking for a six and a half percent raise and they got uh, the government went up to six percent. And so they walked out. Thirty two thousand teachers and staff, the second largest school district, walked off their job. And you know what irritates me? First of all, the Trump administration cuts back the quality of food in the schools. They, they, don't, they now want to do all the processed foods instead of the whole grains again. They cut back there. Soon they'll be calling tomatoes, you know, ketchup a tomato again, and they'll vegetable. And now, if a teacher's making, let's say, thirty or 40000 a year, let's say they're making forty, which is generous. I don't think they even make that much. 6% of 40000 How much is that? $2,400? That's $200 a month. They're buying their own damn school supplies. Mm -hmm. You can't give a teacher $200 a month without complaining about it. If, I mean, I think they should be asking for double pay. Mm -hmm. I mean, to me, they have really? the, one of the most important jobs in the world, teachers do. I agree with you 100%. And they should get benefits. They should be, re they should be treated as like national heroes. I've always said that, <clears throat> that the teacher should be treated like our athletes are treated yes. and our athletes should be treated like They our should be teachers. treated respectfully. <laughs> they should be making money. They should, you know, it's, it should be prestigious. I mean, they're buying their own damn school supplies. And now Trump rolled back. Oh, remember Michelle Obama came out with get rid of all the Cokes, get rid of all the sugar, get rid of the processed food, give them vegetables, whole grains, and, and train them when they're little to eat right and then later they won't have the health problems which will bring the health costs down they won't be overweight which will bring make them healthier it's just the right thing to do trump comes in of course the guy with the hamburgers the hot dogs and the kentucky fried chicken and gets rid of that because he wants all them eating all this junk again so they can grow up and be like him I just, it's just so annoying. I just can't. Well, anyway, I felt bad for the teacher. A lot teachers. of people were in agreement on that. Yeah. The teacher should make more money. If you can afford a million dollars a year in golf carts for the president of the United States, you can afford to give the teachers a fair salary. And I don't even think 6% is enough. I literally think they should be making double what they're making right now. The money is there. We're paying the taxes. The money's there. They're educating the future of the world. I mean, what is wrong with our priorities? I can't. Any, I, need, I need to have $100 billion just to run around and solve problems.
anybody want to donate it, I'll go figure out stuff and how to fix it. <laughs> okay, so listen to this one. Talk about overreacting. So the Philadelphia Eagles lost their game. So this, the football game. So the girlfriend gets all wound up. Kristen Gaston's 31. She's so livid and that's so upset that she takes her dog, shoves it into the microwave because she was upset that they lost, according to WGNO. And then, apparently, she was fighting with her girlfriend about the game and became violent, according to police. The inebriated fan allegedly ripped her, par- her partner's earrings off, then struck her several times, according to the Lee Valley Live report. And she allegedly proceeded to put a cube with the couple's dog in the microwave and threatened to kill the animal. The police came, found the pet, oh crammed into the microwave, and she was arrested on several charges, including... Suspicion of uh, simple assault, harassment, and cruelty to animals. She was booked and released on a $20,000 bail. Talk about overreacting to losing a football game. People have their priorities all screwed up. I'm telling you. very much. You're getting a lot of uh, comments back about the teacher situation, too. Yeah. There seems to be a lot of teachers watching, maybe, today. Some teachers. Good. Um, and some former teachers who said they had to leave the profession because they couldn't afford to live in California and be a teacher. And yeah. they also have to fund their degrees. So that's oh. another piece that nobody even looks at. And many of them have to take continuing educational classes and things like that do. just to be able to practice in the states they're in. So you know, it's, 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 it's like they're paying to do that job. They're paying to do the job. And then not only that, they have to walk through metal detectors to go to school so they don't get shot by guns. It's another layer now. You know? and, and, you know, RJ's tutor, who's a PhD in education in California, she's been tutoring him since he was probably seven or eight years old in the summers, and she does literature, she does math, she does whatever. We try to keep him busy in the summer. She has a PhD in education. She was, a, she was the principal of the, one of the poorest schools in Los Angeles. She literally had to go to the worst neighborhood, walk through metal detectors, and teach these kids. Do you know that she was buying supplies out of her own pocket for these kids, buying clothes? So what I did is I got RJ's friends and myself and got, gathered up all the clothes we could and <clears throat> all the supplies we could and sent them to her on a regular basis so that she could put them in the school. So when a kid, for example, would have an accident in their pants, she would have another pair of jeans or shorts for them. When they didn't, she would say they didn't have food at night. So we would send protein bars and, and, uh, uh, peanuts are not, what would we send? We sent protein bars. Oh, those crackers, cheese, cheese and crackers that you buy in the package and stuff like that. So she could give them things to take home to eat. I shipped about 10 boxes of books here, Jason, to her in California. And do you know the post office lost those boxes and we never found those boxes of books. And those were educational books, books, <coughs> boxes of books. So these teachers are having to struggle and then on top of that, they're making no money. And then they get criticized because they walk out because all they're asking for is just respect and a reasonable amount of money to live on. Just a livable, I just livable wage. I go on and on and on. And I mean, I mean, some of them have been doing this 20 and 30 and 40 years. You don't become a teacher because you want to make money. You become a teacher because you feel it's a calling. You feel like you have something to contribute. You feel like you want to mold and, and help the next generation and educate and share with them. And they're just like treated like, you know, they're treated like, the, the, listen, the girls working at Hooters getting tips probably make more money. Uh, I'm I, sure they do. For serving beer. I can't. So and I, a lot of parents treat the teachers like their uh, babysitting service or, you know, a daycare center where they expect them to teach them the values and the things. So oh, they're yeah. not spending time with them. And the kids are spending more time with their teachers than they are they their own families. They the kids with the teachers. You know, that, that teacher was telling me that just her Ph.D. education, she was still paying that off. She's still paying off her student loans. My niece, who, who, who in Texas told me the other day that her and her husband are just now paying off their last student loan, and their son is now going to college, so they're starting with student loans with him. So I, I paid his first year of school because I'm like, I don't want him to get in debt like you did. Mm-hmm. I just can't. Another person overreacting, a mayor. This is a very sad story. A 53-year-old mayor was at a charity event on the stage in Poland, at a great orchestra of Christmas charity for kids, and a 27-year-old ran up on the stage and stabbed him and killed him. 
Can you believe that, Jason? Oh my gosh. I guess if we do the charity event, I'm going to have to have security guards at the stage anymore. Uh, Linda <sighs> Aguanina, uh, I got her last name right. She said, growing up in Los Angeles, she thought everyone had metal detectors and a police substation in their school. It's so sad. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's it, it, that, that's how they have to live. Yeah. Well, before we go into my quote of the week, I've got to remind you guys to buy my book because I've been getting, I don't know why, a new wave of buyers of books. I've been getting emails, letters, texts, and social media postings about Leah Black from the new, the Real Housewives of Miami, Red Carpets and White Lies, a novel, and page six that I was the next Jackie Collins. Don't forget that. But anyway, you can buy this at hello at leahblack.com or on Amazon. But for some reason, the book started selling a whole lot again. And I have another book coming out. I just have to sit and do it but I don't I don't want to do it right now I'm too lazy I and our handbags are on 75% off you'll never see this $550 bag again for $159 is this stunning stunning and stunning Kathy Griffith has this bag Heather McDonald has this bag a lot of celebrities have this bag and here is another one. On oh yeah there's a yeah. chain on the inside you might want to show them it could be it's a shoulder gorgeous, or a gorgeous fabulous it's very well made comes in a big beautiful box this fabric in a Jimmy Choo bag is $2,600 in the same fabric, not even as nice as a bag. And then this one became very popular again. I don't know if it's because of the Christmas holidays or brides are gearing up for their weddings or people just want a, a Judith Lieber looking bag for $179 <laughs> because this was $660 and we have it on sale for $179 right now. We only have about four or five left of these. Comes in gold, black, the, all the grindstones are clear, but gold, black, yeah, gold and black. It's gorgeous. So anyway. Jesse DeFridis bought the red one, and she just commented, I bought the red one, and I got so many compliments when I wore it this Christmas. Oh, good. So. Send us a picture. By the way, that comes in a gorgeous pewter black, too. Yes, there's a black version stunning. of it. But I mean, the price, I mean, at 179 actually, that's our cost. So. <laughs> We're just sort of like sharing stuff right now. We're in the holiday spirit and whatever. Yeah, and everybody can find... Uh, all of the other handbags and everything else you sell on leahblack.com. And then you can just email us if you want to know anything about prices or whatever, anything. You want extra pictures, you want to discuss it, just email us. Call Jason. He just talks to everybody all the time. I, I listen to him on the phone with the customer for 30 minutes. I'm like, my God, I would have said goodbye after five five seconds. I was like, answer the question. Then he just becomes, oh, hi, how are you? Well, what are you doing? Well, how are your kids? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, the lotion's really good. Oh, yeah, and how's the dog doing? I mean, he's just like, Mr. Chatty Catty over there. <laughs> All right. We give good customer service. The quote of the week, and I love this quote. Oh, this is a good, you liked the one last week. Last week yeah. was don't become someone else, never become someone else's problem. Um, this one's this so week good. I like this one too. There's always more to the story. It's very appropriate. I like Your that Your quotes one. are very like, yeah. reflective of what's going on lately. Yeah. I'm going to do a quote book one day. Maybe I should do that next. Yeah. Oh, Lord. We have, we have a new, all new quotes coming out every Monday now. Oh, um, new quotes are coming out. Yeah. I did that already. Oh, by the way, uh, you forget, don't forget you get free shipping on any orders over $50. We changed that, so that's good. So buy five serums. Yeah, on leeblack.com. Uh, okay, so now let's just get into politics, Ben. We have f uh, five more minutes. Oh, my God. First of all, the Brexit vote was shocking to me. <laughs> I'm not surprised. It was just shocking. I mean, they really uh, I just don't understand shot her down. It, you know, because the thing is, when they voted to leave the, the EU, at that time, they've now proven that the British citizens were saturated with fake news yes. coming out of Russia and Steve Bannon had a whole campaign. Yes. And so they voted with misinformation. But Theresa May, who was against leaving, uh, I mean, yeah, was against leaving, said, I'm, you know, listen, the people have spoken. I don't think they were well informed, but I'm going to honor the vote. So now she's trying to honor the vote when she didn't even agree with the vote to get out of the UK. And she's coming up with practical, plausible, you know, pragmatic ways to exit gracefully, and they're slamming her about it. So I don't know if they're slamming her because there's a huge segment that just doesn't want to leave at all, or if they're slamming her because they just want to leave right away and they don't care what the repercussions are. So I guess between those two factions, they've got an overwhelming majority. So God bless her for staying. Now listen, she could easily just take her ball and go home and say, you know, I've just had enough of this. 
But she says, no, I'm going to see this through. And she's going to stand up and fight. Leave it to a strong woman to get it done. But, you know, I mean, and then she's, you know, a lot of people think they should have another vote because people were so misinformed when they voted. But then, you know, people are saying, well, you're kind of undermining the democracy of the vote by having another vote. I don't know if I agree with that. I think when you can prove that the majority of the people mis- were misled, mis- uh, just scammed, totally misled and scammed over and, and over and over with Russian bots and over and over and over with Bannon's cronies and all the misinformation that goes out there and all the reasons why people want out were for mostly personal greed, the top people. I, I don't know that I would be opposed to a second vote. So I would propose if I were her. You guys, ha- some of you are happy with the way I run the government. Some of you aren't. So rather than I, me resigning, I'm going to put myself up for a new vote. You decide if I should stay. And while we're at it, decide if we should stay in, 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 uh, in uh, the U.K. or not. Now that you've had time to look at what the consequences are. And I would think I would propose that. But I don't know. What I wish do I we know? could get another vote. She would be, vote- she would be voted back in again. She would be voted yeah, in. Yeah, I wish we could get another vote. Yeah, but it's like a bad vote. I mean, honest to God. I mean, I can't, uh, I can't even. On. First of all, you can't even. You just can't even keep up with the scandal and it. stuff. There's just so much unfolding right now. I mean, now they're saying the shutdown is causing domestic food production <coughs> facilities. So now we're at risk with the food that we eat. Yeah, here the, uh, the problem's going to be in three to six months because the the economy is going to take a tumble because of this. Well, even if it's over by now, the repercussions are going to go. But I was exactly. listening to a lady on the radio, and she, this is the things you don't think about. She's a professional dog walker in San Francisco, so. <laughs> Now, she doesn't work for the government, but she can't make any money right now because the government has shut down the parks and the beaches where she used to walk the dogs. Mm -hmm. So she doesn't have access to walk the dogs anymore. Mm -hmm. So now the community got together and put together $1,500 and convinced them to open up the thing and that they would hire their own people to clean it up and this and that and the other. But she went for two or three weeks without any money because she couldn't walk the dogs. So the things that we're not thinking about, like tons of people that are just not, like for example, if you're laid off work, and you're, a, and you're a babysitter, for example. Well, the person laid off work is going to take care of their own kids now, and they can't afford you, so you're without a job. So it's a whole domino effect, and it's all based on, the, on a lie to begin with. Trump said he was going to build the wall, and Mexico was going to pay for it. And the Democrats are like, okay, if you build the wall, and Mexico pays for it, then you can go fight with the states of Texas and the other states about eminent domain and decide where you're going to put it and how you're going to do it. And you can do that because you've got the money to use, but we're not going to give you the money to go and do that because then it's going to become the eminent domain problem. Then he goes, well, now it's going to be steel walls. Well, they showed a picture the other day where his prototype that he was so proud of and built with the steel slats in it, somebody just took a saw and cut it out a right big old square, a steel saw where people could just go through. So... The Democrats' position is that it's not solving the problem. The drugs are coming in through the ports of entry, camouflaged, and most of the immigration problem are people that overstay their visa. So it's a small amount of people that are coming in through the border, and they think, all the Democrats think, we should have border security there, and there are places where we could have fences, and there are places where we could have more security, and there are places where we could have drones, and there are places where we could have a lot of things. But this wall that Trump wants to build, this big, beautiful wall, and maybe someday you'll name it after me, the Trump wall, and it's going to have a big, beautiful gate like the pearly gates of heaven and do it. It's just a waste of money, and it is a waste of money. But the point is, he said he was going to get Mexico to pay for it. So if you can get Mexico to pay for it, go get your money and then go down and fight all the people that don't want it there because you're trying to put it on their property and and waste your time. But why should the American people pay for it? And I have to agree. And he just will not back down. And the Democrats put in every day, they're putting something else on the floor to vote, something else, another way out for him, another way to fix the problem. Let's, let's go ahead and, uh, you know, open the government and then we'll negotiate what we're going to do about border security. And Mitch McConnell will not put the vote on the floor. And he won't put the vote on the floor because he knows that the majority of the senators would vote for it to the point that it would be veto proof. And then Trump would have egg on his face. And then according to Trump, Lindsey Graham, well, if that happened, our party would just be over because we would humiliate the president so much. This isn't about the president being humiliated. This is about running the government. This is your number one thing that you're supposed to do as a president is run the government and keep Americans safe. 
And now we don't. Now Nancy Pelosi puts out a tweet this morning. She says we're not going to have. We're you know because the speaker invites the president for the State of the Union, and she's like we're not going to have the State of the Union address because we don't have the proper security for it. So you can either post. We can postpone it, Mr. President, or you know you can give it to us in writing, whichever you prefer. Now all of this is on top of the fact that the FBI came out that they discovered that the FBI was investigating Trump to determine if he was working on behalf of Russia. And why are they curious if he's working on behalf of, Russia, on behalf of Russia? Well, one, because his national security people like uh, Flynn lied about it, uh, Kushner lied about it, Jr. lied about it, Manafort lied about it. They had a meeting that wasn't about adoption. Uh, they have now investigating millions of dollars that are coming in from Russia and the Ukraine of people supporting and paying to get into uh, the inauguration using straw votes and I mean straw people to get in and funding the inauguration. Where did all that inauguration hundred seven million dollars go? Well, twenty five million of it, twenty seven I think million of it went to Melania Trump's best friend. What'd she do to produce that, that production there? It was a, it was a small uh, audience compared to the amount of people that went to the, the ones before. So of course they're investigating you, Trump. You pulled out of Syria. You don't believe in NATO. You're chumming up to Erdogan and you're chumming up to uh, uh, dictators around the world. Of course they're gonna investigate if you're putting where are your tax returns? Who's funding your hotels? Your son went on television and said an improportionate amount of our business comes from Russia. No bank in the world would loan you money, but the Deutsche Bank, who's under investigation for laundering money for Russian oligarchs, loaned you money. You sold all these properties for double their value to Russians. Of, why wouldn't they be investigating you? And he's like, so insulted and appalled by the question. I can't. You're getting a lot of comments coming in about the matter. Jesse DeFreitas says it's a domino effect with the government shut down. Um, uh, people are saying that, you know, we've got Putin's pu a puppet here. Um, child support checks are not being dispersed now because and of the and shutdown. And IRS return checks won't be yep. dispersed. It's, uh, Margaret Skeloff says it's all on Trump and that um, Miss Lindsay needs to stop clutching his Ms. pearls. <laughs> That's Grow a, a spine one. and resign, is what That's she said. That's a good said. one. Write a rap and, song. And Andrea uh, Gagnon, from, uh, Gagnon from L.A., she lives in L.A., she says, I don't know if the wall is the answer, but something does need to be done to help with the security at the no border. No one is disagreeing You're with not, that. Exactly. But they want to spend the money smart. It'd be like us buying, you know, like like an old dial phone instead of an iPhone used to today's technology and secure the border. But I think a lot of eyes opened up with Trump when he went to Helsinki and stood next to Putin and said he believed Putin when he said that they didn't meddle in the election when 17 U.S. intelligence agencies said they absolutely meddled in the election. Mm -hmm. And now they found out that he's had over a hundred quiet, back channel phone call Prince communications Prince. with the Kremlin. And why did he have five face-to-face -face meetings that he wouldn't let anyone interpret or wouldn't let anyone take notes or uh, have any of his, his uh, administration there and then ask for those notes so that there was no record of it? Exactly. I'm sorry, there's just too much smoke If it walks this. like a duck just too much and it smoke. quacks like a duck, it's probably a duck. <laughs> yeah, and then he, the other day he went out and, and tweeted that Joe Biden is weak and says Obama, Obama took him off the trash heap. That's according to CNN. Why would Trump say that Obama took Joe Biden off the trash heap? Is there anyone more patriotic, down to earth, hardworking American than, than Joe Biden? I don't know anyone that's ever criticized him. I, I mean, I know people have criticized maybe his policy or the way he handled the Anita, Anita Hill hearing, and there are things that are legitimate criticizes, but no, you don't go personally say you take it. He's a former vice president, you take it, and a senator, and he's had aneurysms and brain surgeries, and his son died, and his wife and his baby died when he was back starting out in the Senate. You just don't say he came off the trash heap. What kind of a low-life, low-class person would say that about yeah, somebody like Joe Biden? 
thing. He's actually someone who wants to make, keep America great. And, you know, th- then we have this idiot trying to prove everybody that he's, you know, from a oh, trashy. Yeah, listen to this. You know, they don't want they don't want us to have uh, Affordable Care Act or the Obamacare. They don't want uh, people to have easy, affordable insurance. They want the insurance companies to run it so they can sell the pharmaceuticals, can sell their their product for whatever they want and that they can charge whatever they want to the hospitals and the doctors and this and that. So, guess who's going to Canada to get a surgery for a hernia? <laughs> Rand Paul, of course. the number one sinner that was against socialized medicine, as he calls it, is going to run to Canada to get a surgery. I mean, are you kidding me? These people are just too much. But in good news, the Canadian air traffic controllers sent pizza to, to the New, York, New Jersey air traffic controllers because of the shutdown. It's just unbelievable. But meanwhile, uh, there was a GoFundMe page that raised $20 million for donations for the wall, according to BuzzFeed. And they have to give all the money back because Trump keeps changing what he's going to do with the money and what the wall is going to be like. Mm-hmm. And they can't take that money under false unless it specifically goes to what they said it was for they got to give the money back i mean this is the yeah. gang that just the guy that started them. it too has had three former gofundme uh campaigns that were taken down for illegal reasons so that it's the I same mean, it's guy a- he was going to take the money and put it in a private account and use it i read this whole story oh, on I don't yesterday doubt that. Yeah. i don't doubt that either yeah it's, it's all a big scam you know what it starts at the top yep. it, you know try, when you say drain the swamp i mean he has just filled up the swamp you mm-hmm. know Okay, it's become quicksand, too. People can't get out of it. It's like you no way out once you're in. Um, but, and speaking of safety, a passenger was able to get on a plane and carry a gun on a plane yeah. across yeah. the country. Through Atlanta, yes. Just sounds week. unbelievable. Now, what does Trump do? He wants to celebrate the Clemson Tigers for winning the national championship. So he invites him to the White House. So these young boys are so proud, and they get their suits. They probably didn't even have a suit. They probably just scraped the money together, some of them, to buy a suit and tie to go to the White House or rent it and borrow it, you know. And they're, yeah. and they're little football players, and they're just so proud. And this first time to the White House, and they aren't involved that much in politics at, at that age, most of them. And they're going to the White House, and I, you know they're thinking, oh, my God, prime rib and steak and lobster and cheese platters. And, oh, my God, you know, we're going to have souffle and all these things they've drank dreamed of having their whole life as high school kids they probably never had. And Trump gets up there and he's just proud as a peacock. He's going to serve them hamburgers, hot dogs, Kentucky fried. I don't think he served Kentucky fried chicken, probably because he didn't want to get any grease on his furniture. <laughs> it was all taken and, to the private bedroom. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, that was all. And you know all the leftovers. He ate all the leftovers you know himself. That's right. And so he's, in the, he's got, you know, Wendy's and Burger King, and he's just got a platter of all this stuff. And it's all cold by now. It's been delivered in these boxes. It's sitting there. It's cold. And these little kids are walking around, and they're filling up their plate with, like, little hamburgers and little, they you know. And that. it's just unbelievable. They can eat that they can drive through Wendy's or Burger King in their own little towns and it's just unbelievable he has you know what that says that says this is what I think you deserve this is what I think you deserve who is it? who is who's who is he surrounding himself with that gives that, that they let him do that because he doesn't listen to anybody well but it, for him it was more of a PR moment because the first the second or third sentence out of his mouth was I paid for it myself so he wanted people to know that he spent like, and he did. They, in the article, they verified it was between four and five hundred dollars worth of, of fast food. You know what? I people in this town that I know that have even in, in their kids, they can even just moderate people that go to four private schools spend that on a four-year-old birthday party. Yeah. Okay. And it's a dig at Michelle I mean, Obama. Why don't you just reasons. do chicken fingers? I mean, I just can't with him. Yeah. He's just so tacky. Yeah. I just, uh, I just can't. Oh yeah, Rachel God. Penis says, did you see his tweet where he didn't know how to spell hamburgers? Yeah, and not spell it. And, um, and they're all saying it's disgraceful that, you know, that uh, no. he even had White Castle. And you know what else he said? He said, well, you know, I could have sent the first lady and the second lady into the kitchen to make you guys salads. Ben says a shutdown, but I decided to just pay for this myself and buy this for you. Well, first of all, that's a very demeaning, sexist, oh. misogynist comment. If you want to send somebody in to make salads, send Lindsey Graham and Pence. Don't be talking about <laughs> sending the women into the kitchen to cook. I mean, what's wrong with him? Is he not? He is so. Margaret, he lives in the Neanderthal ages. This is a good point. Margaret Skilioff says he owns a hotel around the corner. Why didn't they just cater it? Yeah. Why didn't they cater it? Yeah. 
<laughs> that would have cost Very good real point. Money. That's why. Very good point. So the museums and the parks are shut down. There's litter everywhere. And, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know. I just can't. <laughs> I don't know. It's just out of control. The, the farmers aren't going to get their subsidizing checks that they wouldn't have to have if he wouldn't have started the trade war with China. Because he started the trade war with China, the farmers lost all their revenue, so then the government was going to subsidize it, and now they can't get those checks. Well, he doesn't understand that these farms are not like you can't put them, park them on a bench somewhere. They have to be watered and cultivated and worked. And how are they going to pay the people to do that? I mean, this is going to be a long-term repercussion from the, from the shutdown. I mean, it's just unbelievable. Mm -hmm. And then and then the NPR reports that the federal ethics agency is telling civil service to avoid servants to avoid the word uh, impeachment or resistance in the workplace until after the 2020 election. What is this now? The Gestapo? Yeah. They're going to tell you what you can and can't say. The linguistic Gestapo. That was another big article that that wall would literally kill thousands of endangered species of animals because it would be a 621 mile wall, uh, mile wall, a barrier that he wants. 2,700 scientists from 47 different countries have come, written a report that says it would endanger endangered species and animals, calling it death row or death blow, that the uh, it would block migration routes, trap and drown animals during the floods. It would do irreversible damage to the already fragile fragile landscape and it would intrude on the eminent domain. Imagine if you you spent your whole life building your little house and property and they want to now put a 30 foot wall up two feet from your house or make you take your house down so they can put the wall up. I mean, it's out of control. It's out of control. So that's my rant today. I don't know. Can I <laughs> well, I think anymore? everyone's in agreement with you on the whole thing and they're all screaming impeachment, impeachment. Margaret Skiloff also said Ogden, Utah is all but a ghost town due to the shutdown. My sister, that's where my sister lives and it's, uh, she's right. It's, she said it's a ghost it's town. just so sad that it's all about Trump's ego, being right, being the bully, not stepping down. And, and let's be honest, he won why, 77 votes out of three states of which the, were targeted by Russian bots and mis, a misinformation campaign. And now Manafort, they have found through Michael Cohen and Manafort collaborated the fact that Manafort gave sold. sold his list of data about polling places for Trump to the Russians. Mm -hmm. So Hillary was right. She said, you know, the Russians could have interfered, but they wouldn't have been able to weaponize it the way they did if they didn't have inside information. Exactly. They knew where to go, they knew what their prejudices were, and they knew what to say in order to sway voters. He's an illegitimate president. No, it's you, just that simple. I was watching back the debate over the weekend with him and her, the CNN debate, yeah. where they got into it about Russia and she was talking about him being Putin's puppet. Yeah. And if you watch that whole debate from start to finish again, it's... Absolutely terrifying she, she how like much stuff is correct. Like she knew everything. Absolutely. And she knew everything because she was Secretary of State and she had information, but she couldn't, didn't want to make it public because she didn't want to politicize it. Exactly. And I blame Obama for not just going ahead and bringing yep. it out it's, anyway. Exactly. But he said he didn't because Mitch McConnell would, said that he would say that it was politically motivated and it wasn't true and he didn't want to insert himself and, and his office into the presidency, but didn't stop McConnell and the rest of them from doing it. McConnell is like, he's the worst right now. He's the one everyone should be going after because they've Agreed. got the votes in the Senate. He won't put it up to vote because he's protecting Trump, which makes you wonder, what does Trump have on McConnell? Because remember, the Russians hacked their RNC emails as well, which also begs the question, what, is it, what do they have on Lindsey Graham? Because Lindsey Graham went from, if we, if we uh, nominate Trump, we'll be creamed and we deserve it, and what a crook and a liar Trump was, to now being his biggest psychophant. So... It, there are all, there's about six or seven Republicans, and David, uh, David Nunes is another one, I think, that were somehow compromised with the Russians, and now they're showing that Mitch McConnell's pack took two and a half million dollars from the Russians. So if you follow the money, and now they're stacking the DOJ with people that want to keep the report quiet. Mm -hmm. I'm telling the press has got to double down and do their job. We deserve to know. And all of you need to call your congressman and say, put this up for a vote open up the government and make that report, Mueller's report, public, unredacted, period, the end. Do you talk about, you want to talk about national security and all executive privilege and all that? None of it matters if we don't have a, if we don't have a democracy. Yes. 
So anyway, I think he's an illegitimate president. I think we should get that trending. That's what everyone else is saying here, <laughs> All too. All right. So we had fun. We ranted, we raved, and we laughed, and we cried. So tune in next Wednesday, Lunch with Leo Live, noon on Wednesdays. Don't forget to go on leahblack.com. Don't forget to go back and look at Tom Arnold's interview on dumb gay politics, which was actually hilarious. Go back and look at the Frankie Grande uh, Lunch with Leah last week. Kelly Dodd two weeks ago. And Kelly Dodds was two weeks ago. And don't forget the and, show uh, in Austin. Yeah, well, or? if the TSA and all that's working, I'll let you know. I'll be there on February the 15th. But uh, And also Jeff Lewis Live Radio that I was on those two weeks. Go on and listen to those shows and comment because they were fun. All right, guys, I love you all. I have fun. Please share this, and let's get more people watching. I will do my part if you do yours. If you get enough people listening and watching, I'll do more than one day a week. But I'm not going to do it for, like, just a handful. we got to do, like, lots of people to make it really worth the time and effort that we put in. Okay? Thank you, guys. Love you much. We didn't have a little black today. I left him at home. Aww. Bye.